Hey guys, Ash Lane here, episode 199, so close to episode 200. Today, I'm going to cover how to attack some of the most popular Town Hall 10 bases that I run into in the game currently. So let's go ahead and start with the base that I usually use, not this base right now, but the base that I usually use. Let's go ahead and take a look at it from my defense log. Now, I'm going to show you the most recent defensive loss I've had, and... Uh, and I also want to show you that one by Carlos. So it's going to be a two attacks I want to share with you guys. Two different ways to beat not only my base, but bases really similar to it with that resource ring around the center. So let's go ahead and start with the most recent one. This seems to be a successful way that you can attack this base that I have here. So you can see Poppy here uh, comes in from the west hand side. Now, attackers that succeed against my base with these go uh, ground attacks, go wipe, go wee wee, tend to attack from the west side like this so they can use you can either use a jump spell to get over that first wall or you can use wall breakers either way seems to work all right but you want to crack try to crack two walls so you can get the golem coming in from the north compartment there too that seems to be essential to getting the troops to go the right way and not having all your golems go uh, off off kilter to the sides to the north to the south so you can see the golems are heading north but the troops are generally falling behind it uh, pretty well there here already used the Barbarian King uh, Rage ability, and that's why I might change my base, because if you can get that Barbarian King in the middle, the defensive concentration just doesn't seem to be enough to withstand having the King in the core, especially when the Queen is nearby to snipe that Town Hall down. So this is an example of a successful attack. Now, the Golem, the reason I like to take three jump spells lately on my attacks is because you can see the Golem, one Golem kind of got hung up there, but that's not really going to be the end of the world. You can see he still has some wizards left. He still has the queen with her ability still available, the cloak. So unfortunately for me, fortunately for him, it was a well-executed attack. He has plenty of time left, plenty of uh, queen health left. He's going to use the royal cloak right there, and he's going to drop some minions over here to snipe maybe one unit. No, not even one unit, but you can snipe my army camp down here. If you see this base, the only snipeable unit not, not touching a defensive unit is that army camp in the south. So I could protect that with an air mine if I want to. I'm thinking about that, but it is kind of a waste of an air mine at the same time. So this base, I'm going to try this out maybe one or two times just to see how it does for me. Let's go ahead and jump right into the other defensive replay, though. This one is by Carlos, and this was a very interesting attack. I guess it's a reverse goat lava attack, and boy, was it successful. And it was actually kind of fun to watch, even though it really hurt minus 23 cups. That would basically be the equivalent of about six hours of rating on my part, not too much fun. So, okay, Carlos comes in from the north, northeast section here. It's very, very pretty much a standard uh, uh, Lava Loonian attack with one dragon added in as the town hall sniper if he got that far, but of course he doesn't. Uh, you can see my air sweeper here is facing towards the southwest. And uh, even though there's all those uh, the, the graves there, I actually had my traps redeployed just trying to lure an attacker as I did have a defensive uh, win prior to this attack. So you can see here the dragon is still alive, but the dragon's going to go down. Now there's only 31%, so I'm feeling you know all right at this point watching the, the defense live on the edge of my seat, but... He has a golem, so it's kind of like like I said, a reverse go lava. He has a golem and he has a few wall breakers. You can see Carlos really knows what he's doing. He's in UN, UN Arab, which is a top 20 clan, if I'm not mistaken. That might be around 25 right now, but a really well-known clan, a part of the UN family, and obviously a really smart attacker. You can see here he sneaks in some wall breakers, sets off some traps, uh, make sure he cleared the way for that golem. Then he brings the rest of the wall breakers in. And look at this. It's, instead of using the golem and the heroes first in this attack, he's going to use the go ahead and use the golem uh, second to uh, to make a create a shield for the heroes. And now watch this. He's going to use his heroes uh, one at a time. Very patient on the hero deployment here. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward a little bit because you can kind of get the gist of what he does here. But he uses the golem and the king to clear out this entire section, clearing 
running away for the queen to get to that town hall that is already damaged by that drag. Well, maybe it wasn't the dragon. It was the balloons. But either way, it was damaged. So now the Barbarian King Rage ability has been used. The queen only has a couple distracting units. But once she takes down that, uh, that cannon and the spell factory is still up. But she's going to go head straight for the town hall. This is kind of a cool strategy, huh, guys? I mean, the queen takes down the spell factory. Now she gets on the dark elixir. Pops that royal cloak in the very last second. Town hall didn't have much hit points left. And boom, my village goes down. Two star, 28 cups. Ouch. I want to show you one more or maybe two more replays. This will be a little bit of a longer episode, but I really want to focus on some of the most popular bases and how to take them out. So you saw how to beat my base. Let's go ahead and look from our last war. The enemy had a good attack on Gloria from our clan, and it's this is a base that I see a lot up in High Champions League. It's the type of the base with this center unit that's kind of a, a, a strange uh, indented square shape, I guess, an indented rectangle. But basically, it has the three expos and the Inferno Tower as well as the uh, as well as the Clan Castle in the center there, and then it has a ring of resources around that. It's kind of an odd shape, but this is how you beat this base. You go ahead and drop two jump spells right on the squares on the edges. Who would have really thought to do that to drop them right on the mortars? But this is actually going to be a really successful attack here by Cami D sixty five. Now he pokes through, or she pokes through. I'm not sure with a couple golems in the center. So this is a six golem attack. I'm actually seeing a lot of these six golem attacks used with the, uh, the the three jump spells and a few wall breakers. This is in fact what I'm doing right now in my attacks while on my push. So the essentially the idea is you have two wall you have six golems. You have two uh, four golems flanking the center two golems. So let me re-articulate that. You have two flanking units, right? Each each team comprised of the two golems and a backup, a few uh, wizards. And then in the middle uh, of the two flanking units, in the center you have your heroes, as well as two more golems, as well as one P.E.K.K.A. That's what I've been doing. And you can see how, how really nicely it works here. So using you're forming kind of a triangle with those jump spells. The last jump being being used to get to the center of the base. So that is how you beat this base or bases that are similar. Use the same exact strategy. I guarantee it will work for you. And a lot of people ask me, I feel like I repeat this every video, but what if I don't have max heroes? Are these are these uh, you know four or five golem strategies? Do they work if you don't have max heroes? And my answer is always the same. Of course they work. I think that people who say that they don't uh, are, are incorrect on this one. And the reason being that golems, if any Anything can protect you from having lower level, uh, having lower level heroes because they eat so much damage and they allow your heroes more time to work. You can still carry plenty of DPS. Having 14 to 20 wizards is plenty of DPS. It's not like you're losing. Uh, it's not like you only have your heroes, I should say, to attack for you. So that's just my opinion on the matter. I've seen uh, attacks with low heroes still, or, or mid mid range heroes. I shouldn't say low. It's not like level five and five, but mid range heroes. You know. Know, high teens, lower 20s, uh, use the uh, five golem strategies with, with a lot of success. So just thought I'd share that. Now this attack by NATO, this is another very common base. You see it facing all different directions. Sometimes the, sometimes the open areas to the east, to the west, obviously the north or the south. And you can always beat it the same way. It's using two jump spells and you're going to go in from the, let me just pause here. You see there's three expos here and the expos aren't always in the open area in the teaser area. Sometimes they have one over here near where these air defenses in the clan castle is. But either variant of the base, you basically want to choose attack from the south or the north, or if it's obviously facing a different direction, you want to avoid this open area on these bases. You can still beat it by going into the open area, but I prefer using the two jump spells coming in from the side of the town hall, in this case from the bottom of the town hall, and your troops will just funnel right into the to the heroes, into this case the barbarian king, and then later to the queen, and you can you allow the heroes to lure your troops to this to the town hall. A few of your troops might get off track, like in this attack by NATO, the king and the P.E.K.K.A. go the wrong way. But as long as that queen goes towards that uh, town hall, especially if she has some golem coverage like she does now, just be patient on this attack. Be patient, but be deliberate on these attacks, and you'll definitely have success. This is my favorite way, like I mentioned before, to beat these bases, these, these teaser-like bases with a huge empty compartment. Go to the sides, use two jumps, and you'll try 
troops will funnel right into the town hall. You can see the lo the walls are low level in this attack, but uh, even with high level walls, just do the same exact strategy. Guarantee you'll have some success. If you want to hold back some wizards too to snipe, NATO didn't hold back any wizards. I think he pretty much thought he had it in the bag, but uh, wizards could easily snipe some of these outside units too, get some more percentage if you had to. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video showing you how to take down these top, or really, I shouldn't say top, but really popular bases in the game right now. Feel free to duplicate any attacks or give feedback if you hit them a different way. Go ahead and share it with your clanmates, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care, guys.